It might sound unbelievable, but in Brazil, farmers are digging massive war-style trenches just to hold back invading wild boars. In a single night, these destructive animals can flatten entire fields. They move in coordinated groups, tearing through crops and destroying everything in sight. Traditional defenses, fences, wires, electricity, don't stand a chance. Instead, the farmers have resorted to carving deep trenches into the earth. Surprisingly, this simple method actually works. Across rural Brazil, wild boars have become a living nightmare. They don't just chew up crops, they trample entire cornfields, uproot cassava, smash sugarcane, kill livestock, and spread dangerous diseases. In just one night, they can cause damage worth thousands of dollars. Fed up with endless destruction, many farmers began thinking differently. Instead of relying on expensive electric fences, unreliable traps, or harmful chemicals, they decided to dig ditches, long, deep, and wide defensive lines around their farms. It's a straightforward idea. When the boars approach, they're met with a steep trench. They can't leap over it, and when they try, most fall inside. Once trapped, climbing out is almost impossible. What started as a desperate, almost extreme idea quickly proved to be effective. The boars either get stuck, turn back, or leave the area altogether. What looked crude at first turned out to be one of the smartest, most reliable defenses. In some areas, the trenches are so wide and deep, they resemble military fortifications. For farmers, however, these ditches are more than just pits in the ground. They are shields protecting entire seasons of sweat and hard labor. Wild boars are not just pests. They are highly destructive, organized invaders. One night is enough to erase months of work. On top of that, they spread disease wherever they go. To counter this, trenches, usually one to one and a half meters deep and over a meter wide, started appearing across southern and southeastern Brazil. The steeper the wall, the harder it is for animals to escape. Some farmers have gone as far as digging trenches that stretch for kilometers around their properties. Of course, the work is backbreaking and expensive, but the reward is peace of mind. The boars can't break in, and if they try, they fall or give up. Still, farmers ask themselves, what if the animals learn to avoid the trenches? What if they simply move on to unprotected lands? That's why some experts say a coordinated, region-wide system is better than isolated efforts. One of the biggest advantages of trenches is that they don't rely on electricity, poison, or fences. They need no maintenance crews or constant watch. They simply sit there, 
Silent, solid, and effective, like natural defense walls. But there's a catch, the cost. Building these trenches requires heavy machinery, fuel, skilled operators, and plenty of time. For large farms or rocky land, construction becomes painfully expensive and slow. Digging ditches is not as simple as grabbing a shovel. It's a major investment with costs reaching over $2 per meter. For a farm perimeter stretching 10 or 20 kilometers, the bill quickly runs into the tens or even hundreds of thousands. And then comes maintenance. In rainy areas, soil erodes fast, trenches can collapse, fill with mud, or turn into stagnant pools if drainage isn't carefully planned. Without proper channels and retaining walls, the defense wall can become a muddy hazard, and hazards are no joke. Poorly marked trenches have swallowed tractors, trap trucks, and even cause injuries to workers moving at night. Farmers must add signs, bridges, or crossing paths to make sure the defenses don't turn into death traps for themselves. The terrain is another challenge. Trenches work best in flat or rolling fields, but in rocky, hilly, or forested lands, costs skyrocket and results aren't always worth the effort. Wild boars are not the only threat. Hybrids known as Java porcos, crosses between domestic pigs and wild boars, are even stronger, tougher, and more destructive. Native animals like peccaries also wreak havoc, moving in large herds and storming into fields, tearing through corn, sugarcane, cassava, and peanuts. Other countries have tried different strategies. In the US, helicopters are used to gun down herds from above. In Australia, traps and trained dogs are common, but these are costly, risky, and sometimes harmful to ecosystems. That's why Brazil's trench solution is praised as low cost, practical, and sustainable. Take Sao Paulo, one of the worst hit regions. Farmers there have reported herds of 200 boars charging through their lands. By morning, nothing is left standing. It feels like a war zone. This is why more and more farmers are choosing to dig their own fortress walls.
But boars aren't the only menace. Capybaras, the world's largest rodents, look peaceful by rivers, yet in fields they become relentless grazers. Once they find food, they stay. They chew down young plants, leaving the soil exposed, and soon weeds, pests, and termites invade. A small loss early in the season can spiral into total crop failure. So when you see fields surrounded by trenches, don't laugh. They're not war relics. They're the last line of defense for farmers trying to protect their future. Every meal you eat has in some way been shielded by these quiet earthen walls. And the problem doesn't stop at Brazil. The war against wild boars is global. Canada, too, has reached a crisis point. In July 2024, hunters brought down a massive hog weighing over 1,120 pounds. It wasn't a victory, it was a warning of just how big and dangerous the threat had become. Canadian farmers are forced to fight back with weapons, traps, and training that looks more like preparation for battle. Hunters endure grueling drills, shooting in darkness, balancing against charging targets at 40 kilometers per hour, sharpening their instincts so hesitation doesn't turn them from hunter to hunted. In groups, they track, chase, and bring down boars before the animals devastate crops. According to the Canadian Invasive Species Centre, as many as a million boars are eliminated in badly hit areas each year. Not everyone agrees with the hunts, but for many farmers, it's a matter of survival. Authorities have set strict quotas, four or five boars per hunter per day, to balance control with ecological concerns. Traps remain Canada's strongest tool. The drop gate trap, fast, clean, and inescapable, relies on bait like corn and is now powered by solar systems and remote cameras. With one signal, the gate slams shut, silently capturing the animals. Alongside trapping, sterilization programs target males to slow reproduction. Though slower, it offers a humane option.
But for now, large-scale traps remain the backbone of Canada's defense. In Alberta, drop gate traps cut populations by 65% in just 18 months. Still, not all terrain allows for such technology. In rugged forests, traditional bow hunting is making a comeback. Silent, precise, and eco-friendly, it leaves no noise or pollution. Farmers and hunters bait fields, hide in trees, and wait for the right moment. One arrow, one shot. If missed, the herd vanishes into the dark. But wild boars don't forgive mistakes. They're fast, aggressive, and capable of turning on hunters in an instant. That's why skill, silence, and discipline are everything. With sharp broadhead arrows and recurve bows, Hunters stake their survival on accuracy. Every encounter is a gamble. At night, the forest becomes a battlefield. One wrong move, and the hunter becomes the hunted. The truth is stark. A single boar can kill a deer. A herd can wipe out a farm in hours. Canada, like Brazil, is at a crossroads. Fight back now or risk losing what generations have worked to build. The choice remains, destroy to survive or manage to coexist,